The Flash film has been in heavy development since 2020 with Andy Machete in the director's chair. Ezra Miller found himself in headline after headline for the wrong reasons even just a year ago. However, DC Studios and Warner Bros. Discovery stayed the course to release the date on June 16th of 2023. How does the film perform despite the controversy and the production problems? Does the film feature enough surprises for longtime DCU fans? And does the film hold up plot-wise? The film starts off with Barry Allen, played by Ezra Miller, in the present-day DCEU world. He and Bruce Wayne, played by Ben Affleck, chase down some deadly mercenaries and Flash gets caught saving some babies, nurses, and therapy dogs. They share some friendly banter while making the big save, but not without the help of Wonder Woman, played by Gal Gadot. The Justice League looks like they're still together in this universe. No signs of Cyborg, Aquaman, or Superman for obvious reasons, but Barry yearns for his old family while growing up. He also yearns to prove his dad's innocence. The courts say that he killed his wife, Nora Allen, played by Mary Belle Verdu, decades ago. Barry is late for work and gets called out by his own boss. He also runs into a journalist and high school crush, Iris West, played by Kiersey Clemens. She asks him questions about for the newspaper and it frustrates Barry. Barry calls his dad in jail about the court's case and that he's working on it. Henry encourages his son to live his own life and to go out with Iris. He and his father share a conversation about how they used to spend dinner together with Barry's mom. We cut to a flashback scene where young Barry and his parents prepare for a dinner. Such a heartwarming scene and it looks like a normal family getting together for dinner. Later on, Barry is riding upstairs before his father arrives with some groceries. His mother downstairs screams and Barry runs down to investigate. He finds his father holding his mother while bleeding out after a knife jabbed into her chest. Henry Allen is played by Ron Livingston and calls for Barry to call the police. You can tell by how it was all sequenced that Henry didn't stab his wife. But this lands him in jail and it just frustrates Barry even more. After hanging up with his dad in jail, Barry runs and almost makes his way back in time to save his mom. He stops himself before telling Batman about all the possibilities of time travel. Bruce is slightly impressed, but he is more cautious about the idea of time traveling. He tells Barry that both of them have a tragic past and it's made them who they are now. Bruce isn't 100% on the plan and warns Barry before driving away. Flash doesn't take the warning to heart, however. He goes for the biggest run of his life and travels to the day his mom died. He stops the event from ever happening, essentially, and runs back to the present day to see what happened. He sees all the new memories he created with his family, but suddenly, a mysterious figure knocks him out of the time portal. Barry then finds himself back in 2013 after encountering his younger self. The two bicker back and forth about the situation before Barry realizes what year it is. He's panicked at the fact that he's arrived on a day he gains his powers in the past. Younger Barry had a date with Iris West, but they'll have to reschedule. The two Barrys arrive at the police station, the same location where OG Barry got his powers. Their reenactment is successful and Barry 2 gains super speed. But Barry 1 is stuck in the time period after losing his own powers during the procedural. There is no time to evaluate the situation because General Zod is on Earth. Zod seeks out a Kryptonian on Earth and Barry assumes that they need to find Clark Kent. They also seek out the other Justice League members but realize that the world has no meta-humans. Barry 1 gets a light bulb in his head and decides to hunt down Bruce Wayne, a non-meta human. The two arrive at Wayne Manor and encounter an old version of Batman. This one is retired and played by Michael Keaton. Side note, I doubt this is the same exact universe Burton created, but it's still very cool to see Michael Keaton return. But Bruce explains to Barry how the multiverse works, essentially, via spaghetti noodles. Barry finds out that he's a magnet to inevitable events and people, events like the death of Bruce's parents. He apologizes to Bruce about the situation and asks for his help, but Batman says no before the two Barrys decide to use his tech instead. They use his computers in the Batcave to search for a falling meteor or asteroid. This falling item could be the ship that Kal-El was on. They eventually find a location in Russia. Bruce gets a new fire on himself and suits up in one of his old suits. He tells the two Barrys that he's going to help them find Superman and that'll be the end of it. The trio arrive and get through heavy security to find Clark. Batman shows off some of his old skills in this scene as well. It's way too cool seeing Keaton back in the role, taking on some bad guys, flying around and gliding around, using all the tactics that we all know and love from the Tim Burton movies. They locate the Kryptonian and escape the heavy gunfire, but they actually save a woman named Kara Zor-El, played by Sasha Cow. The four arrive upstairs and outside surrounded by enemies. Kara saves the others before they retreat to Wayne Manor. Barry One is confused on why there is no Superman on Earth. Kara tells Barry that she was protecting her cousin this whole time. The two got separated at one point, and now Zod is going after Clark. 
While Supergirl retreats to test her powers, Barry tries to get his own back. The two Barrys and Bruce try to recreate the event to give Flash his powers back. Clara finds the US military and Zod are actually meeting in private. She is shocked to see Zod betray the humans and lets out a massive yell. The signals Zod and she flies away. Back at Wayne Manor, a lightning storm almost kills Barry before Clara returns. She carries Barry all the way to the skies and that's where he gains his powers. The two group up one more time before fighting Zod and Barry gets his old suit back after lending it to his younger self. Younger Barry creates his own suit with some of Batman's gears and spray paint as well. The Justice League is formed as Barry warns his younger self that he has no idea what occurs past this point in the timeline. The League arrives to fight Zod and his forces and the battle is a long and incredibly colorful sequence showcasing two variants of the Flash. Kara meets with Zod before he tells her that Kal-El didn't make it. Apparently Zod and his forces did find Superman's ship and actually performed some tests on him to see whether or not they could use his genetics to recreate Krypton. But he didn't live through the experiments and this situation and this fact angers Kara and she goes full rage mode and almost demolishes all of Zod's forces. Zod however gets the one up and ends up taking Kara's life and takes her DNA. Batman is killed during the battle as well and the situation just looks to be getting bad. Barry 2 tries to run the clock back so they can prevent Zod's victory. This damages the multiverse and causes different universes to collapse. We see universes with both Nicolas Cage as well as other Superman ca cameo in this film. This dire situation causes Barry 1 to come to grips with his own decision that he made in the very beginning. He realizes that he needs to go back in time to let his mom pass in order to save the multiverse. Barry 2 is angered by the situation and disappears while running away. Suddenly, the dark figure returns and attacks Barry 1. The figure turns out to be an older version of Barry 2 who's tried multiple times to fix that situation. Barry 2 arrives and sees his older self attempt to kill Barry 1. The younger Barry sacrifices himself to prevent his older self from even existing. The Flash, now freed, runs back in time to let his mother die. This sad scene and sacrifice by Barry allows the timeline to restabilize. He ends up in the present time but left evidence proving his father's innocence in the murder of his mother. Henry is exonerated and Barry is relieved to see that he fixed the timeline. He gets a call from Bruce Wayne that he's arriving soon. Apparently Barry Allen encounters a different variant of Bruce Wayne played by George Clooney. Barry is shocked to see that the timeline isn't 100% fixed, but that is the end of the film. We also get a scene where Barry brags to Aquaman about traveling across the multiverse after the credits roll. That is The Flash 2023 film directed by Andy Muschietti. I enjoyed this film and I found it action packed from beginning to end in almost every scene. I thought the score of the film was also superb and, the, and it felt like a superhero film. The humor from Ezra Miller's performance was good and the emotional scenes hit the right notes. Nora's death and having Barry come to grips with that outcome is rather sad, but a very down to earth ending. Not everything comes out how we like to see it and I think that was the message of the film. The plot of the film wasn't terribly confusing despite some questionable delivery here and there. For example, I would say things like, how did Nora get sab? And there's some small questions left here and there, but I think that ultimately the film holds up plot wise. The cameo scenes with actual actors were done well in my eyes. The ones with visual effects weren't always looking right to me, to be honest, especially in the larger sequences with the bigger sets and effects. But I think it could have been cleaned up a little bit and that some of the characters look a little bit too plasticky in my eyes. Even Marvel Studios at their lowest in visual effects don't look so plasticky and rubber. I understand the director's choice in that manner, but it didn't look right to me, to be honest. Michael Keaton and Sash Kell were actually my favorite parts of the film. I was saddened to see them both meet their eventual fates in this universe, but in the multiverse, are those characters actually staying dead? Who knows? But this film falls a bit short on the emotional side in comparison to a film like the second Spider-Verse film. I hate making comparisons, but both films explore the multiverse, both explore the ideas of shattering dimensions or timelines. I just hope we don't get burnt out by the multiverse stuck before Kang Dynasty arrives, to be honest. But I found this film to be good on its own feet. Take away the meh effects here and there, and you have a fun flick all around. It's a fun ride for most superhero fans, and it hits right on the nostalgia notes here and there. And I think it hits right on every other cylinder as well. And no, George Clooney is not the future Bruce Wayne of the Machete movies that we might be seeing in Batman and the Brave and the Bold. As for this film, I give it a 7.7 .7 out of 10 for me. Not as strong on the emotional side as I was hoping for. Some plot holes here and there kept me from really enjoying this film and giving it that really crucial eight. But the film is actually a really good DCEU film to be honest, and it does justice to everybody appearing in the film. 
But enough about my own thoughts. Let me know what you guys thought about The Flash in the comment section below. I'm not sure if Ezra Miller would be the future Flash moving forward, but let me know in the comments if you think he should be the one moving forward in James Gunn's universe. Share all those thoughts down below. Thank you for watching today's video and I hope that you enjoyed today's topic. If you could hit that sub button, that would be awesome. Hit that like button and boost my video up on the algorithm. Click that bell so you don't miss any of my videos that get uploaded. And if you have some time to spare, check out some of these videos on your screen right now.